These are some of the most popular Christian YouTube channels which spend a majority of their videos, if not all of their videos, exposing false teachers or false doctrine. We reference to them today commonly as heresy hunter channels. And I want to do this video to expose a problem I've seen on some of these channels in recent years. But a big problem that not many people dare to speak about publicly, I want to talk about also in today's video with these channels. But we need to leave that towards the end of today's video. Now, I know a video like this can get a lot of attention for the wrong reason. So I want to put some disclaimers before I progress any more forward in today's video. Firstly, owners of heretic hunter channels or heresy hunter channels, I view as brothers and sisters in Christ. Number two, I'm not assuming by making this video anybody's motives as to why they're making the videos. I'm not making this video to say they're making those videos for views or for money or because they have a vendetta or anything along those lines. Number three, I don't think heresy hunter channels per se are unbiblical. So I'm not making this video to say that heresy hunter channels need to stop and never make videos again or anything along those lines. And number four, this is not a video to defend anybody who's been mentioned in any of these heresy hunter channel videos just for the record now that i've got those disclaimers out of the way hopefully now you can watch this video with the right mindset and in the right heart and see where i'm coming from when i'm actually making this video the first video i want to use as an example comes from this channel right here is a brother in christ by the name of colin miller although he spends a majority of his videos dealing with heresy hunting if you want to call it that right for the most part, some of the videos I've actually seen are biblically accurate and he's on point. So this was a video where he was exposing Stephen Furtick, right? And today, as I record this video, he even says in this video, he hopes this can be his most watched video. And ultimately, it is his most watched video currently as I make this video. When I first saw this video, I was kind of intrigued. I was like, okay, what is he going to speak about, which is clearly going to be the end of Stephen Furtick's career? Basically, I'll leave the link, I'll leave the video linked in the description box below for you to watch it in your own time and to see that I'm not taking what he's saying out of context. But just to sum up this video, he basically goes in to talk about how he's done some speech analysis with some tools and he's written up a report. And he's explaining how certain words, certain phrases were missing from a collection of 10 sermons from Stephen Furtick. I remember at the time when I started watching this video, I thought immediately about one thing, which we'll speak about a little bit later on in today's video. But hopefully you're already seeing some of the issues and some of the problems, which whether you like Stephen Furtick or not, that isn't the issue and this is one of the main reasons why i make a video like this because no matter where you stand as christians we need to be balanced we shouldn't just throw stones on somebody just because they've got false doctrine or they may be a heretic that's not the case right we always have to judge everything on a case by case basis or calling to use 10 sermons right already is what we're gonna call a small sample size. And this is actually problematic on many different levels. So the sample size is a problem. He honed in on words like hell or sin or repentance and basically saying Stephen Furtick rarely or didn't mention those words at all. If we're going to go by a strict wording, that obviously is problematic in many different levels. Who are we to judge and say, this is the word that needs to be used and that is the word that needs to be used. We live in a, in a world today where there's multiple alternative words, right, which can be used in that place. For example, we can substitute sin for missing the mark or falling short. We can substitute hell for the lake of fire or eternal punishment or eternal judgment. Let's say, for example, that this sample size of 10 sermons from Stephen Furtick didn't have any of those alternative words. I don't know if Colin's research or study or analysis went that deep into it. That wouldn't be conclusive, but that would be more evidence to showcase the argument he was actually trying to make. But the thing I mentioned earlier on in today's video, which I first thought about when I understood where he was trying to go with that video, was I immediately thought about the book of Esther and how the book of Esther in the Old Testament doesn't have the word God mentioned even one time. So by the case he's trying to make against Stephen Furtick based on 10 sermons, who is anybody 
not to say, like people have even done in the past, to say, you know what, we shouldn't accept the book of Esther in the Bible today because God isn't mentioned explicitly, not even one time. Can you see the problem? But it gets even worse. How many times is the word repent in the book of Esther? Goose egg. How many times is the word sin in the book of Esther? Goose egg. How many times is the word hell in the book of Esther? That's right. Goose egg. God isn't mentioned. Repent isn't mentioned. Sin isn't mentioned. Hell isn't mentioned. Just because a word is not mentioned in a body of work doesn't justify whether it's legitimate or not. Even if you go to a New Testament example, right? The Gospel of John, for example, doesn't have the word hell mentioned in it. Doesn't have the word repent mentioned in it either. Are we now going to say that John doesn't talk about repentance in his gospel or doesn't talk about hell in his gospel? No. One of the things I want us to be as Christians is smart and to understand when is a good argument to make and when is a bad argument to make, which can actually backfire on us with somebody who is actually qu quite smart in regards to the arguments they're actually making. Now, the second example in today's video I want to look at is from this channel right here called I Think Biblically. Many of his videos are on similar topics, exposing um, teachers, exposing false doctrine, etc. And the video I want to highlight just for sake of today's video was this video right here where he's basically speaking against Joel Osteen having a $100 million church. Just to simplify it for the sake of today's video, he's saying that Joel Osteen here has a $100 million church and it's basically a waste of money, is what he says in the video, to spend all of that money on a church. This is kind of confusing and the reason it's confusing is because if you don't have a problem meeting in a church building, now we're basically debating and quibbling over how much a church building should actually cost. And this isn't to say like God is biblically against expensive buildings, right? We know God sanctioned, sanctioned the tabernacle. We know God sanctioned the temples. If a building is 100 million, is a 1 million building a waste of money too? Is a half a million dollar building a waste of money too? It really doesn't come down to how much the building or the house or wherever you are meeting in actually costs we could look at an example right which let's look at um answers in genesis for example and their famous ark encounter that cost a hundred million dollars to make as well so if you think about the kind of videos i've discussed in today's video from these sorts of channels notice it's not necessarily the biblical content it's the content where it's now start speaking about things which are going beyond those bounds doesn't make it right for example to call out Joe Osteen for having a hundred million dollar church but not call out a preacher you like who may have a church building which costs millions of dollars as well just because you don't view him or he may not be a heretic that's what we call a double standard either it's wrong to have an expensive building or call out everybody or multiple people who have expensive buildings and this leads me on to the big problem I spoke about at the start of today's video where I was talking about something that is rarely spoken about in the online spaces and this is the fact that many of these heretic hunter channels are quick to go for teachers and people from certain denominations or who hold to certain doctrines. But when it comes to people in their own circles, they remain relatively quiet as if nothing has actually happened. And this is a great example is what's been happening recently in regards to John MacArthur and his ministry. And in recent weeks, most of these heresy hunter channels have been quiet on this particular matter or even released videos in favor of John MacArthur. And this is exactly the problem I'm talking about. But hopefully today's video has been a blessing to you and you've realized that it's not every video that goes for somebody who may be a heretic is something which you should be thumbsing up, thumbing up or agreeing with because the fact of the matter is some of these videos are actually more problematic to the faith than actually helping the faith, as I've explained in today's video. So if you like today's video, press the thumbs up button, feel free to watch another video on the channel, and let me know your thoughts below the video, and we can take the conversation further. Lahitra Oates.